Um, yeah, welcome. My name is Arne Talman, and uh, we're going to talk about MUFS, which is a multilingual and multimodal vector search application. And our talk will focus on a recent demo implementation we did with GSI technology um, using their APU hardware acceleration. Hi, I'm Dima, or Dmitry Khan, uh, and I wanted to add to what Arne said. We spoke a lot about single modality search during this conference and also how, to, how vector search works. Uh, but we didn't speak about what would it take to implement an application using all this tech and also go multimodal. And this is what we're going to be focusing on. And I wanted to introduce uh, my distinguished colleague Arne Talman who is the lead AI engineer at Silo AI. It's a, a consulting company from the Nordic, uh, based in Finland, headquartered in Finland. Uh, he's also a co-founder and CEO of Basement AI and a PhD student working on uh, computational semantics at the University of Helsinki and his supervisor ha happens to be here, Stergios. <laughs> <laughs> so no pressure, Arne. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I want to introduce Dimitri Khan, who is a senior product manager at uh, TomTom and the principal AI scientist at Silo, Silo AI. He's also the Vector podcast host, so if you haven't subscribed, please go and subscribe to his great uh, podcast. Thanks, Arne. Uh, so, brief outline of our talk today. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what motivated us to do this demo uh, application, also background, and what is Muse. We will also introduce Muse to you. Uh, and then we'll go into implementation details of our demo with GSI technology. Uh, we will show you demos if demo gods are merciful to us. And uh, we will show you also uh, relevance testing results because search engine does not exist without evaluation and lessons learned. So what's multimodal? In the recent article on VentureBeat, uh, Andrew Ang actually said, predicts that multimodal AI will be developing more and more because we spend so much time in single modalities. Now we accumulated so much knowledge that we can actually cross the borders. And what is a modality? So for example, when you have text, uh, textual documents and you have textual queries, you basically exist in the same space, right? Or if you index images some way, and then you can upload an image and search with image uh, distance, that's also the same modality. But what if you want to cross? And there are some reasons, big reasons to do it. For example, some hidden semantics and images. So uh, next, this talk will be taken over by Andrew Ang. Uh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so just in a nutshell, how keyword search that you probably know a lot about compares to vector search. So keyword search, you know, systems are well known, like Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, Solar, Vespa, VV8 also support that. Um, uh, and, and in that keyword search part, they rely on matching terms using uh, an inverted index. And by the way, this data structure is fairly old. It's from 15th century, if you didn't know. Uh, and also it's at the back of every book. Um, so, but it actually makes it quite difficult to, to find items with similar meaning. Of course, you can craft dictionaries, but it takes time. And so it's also not uh, directly suitable for multimodal search. So I cannot really index an image, right? It doesn't have terms, so it won't go into the inverted index. And here is an example on the left. So if I'm typing a bear eating a fish by a river, uh, unfortunately, our untuned uh, keyword re retrieval using uh, Elastic Open Search would uh, fetch heron eating a fish. So you see it catches eating a fish, but it forgets about the object. Um, and then on the right side, vector search. So what can it do? Uh, actually, it use, utilizes like deep um, like neural networks uh, to represent objects like uh, vectors, right? So objects could be text, could be images, anything you can vectorize, really. And then the queries are also represented as vectors. So now you step away from the inverted index and you move into geometric space. So the same we were taught in school, right? So vector algebra. Um, and ranking is based on vector similarity and different functions use different uh, way of doing it, like, for example, uh, an angle between vectors, right? And so here, 
uh, I can actually index images, I can index text, I can index something else. And the same query gets vectorized, right? So it's a long vector. Depending on your model, uh, there will be so many dimensions. And the results are also vectors. And here you can see an image of a bear eating fish in the river, right? So very relevant. Cool, and so a bit about motivation. Why did we decide to uh, try uh, GSI APU, which is a hardware uh, developed specifically for vector search at scale? Uh, so earlier, probably like a year ago, I published a blog post where I compared Elasticsearch native um, versus, and, and native is exact KNN, so it traverses all vectors. And I had a million abstracts from DBpedia, so fairly short documents, uh, one million. And then Elastic and then is from Alex Klebitz, um, open source. It's a plugin to Elasticsearch. And back then it was called Open Distro, um, also with the KNN plugin and GSI. As you can see on this graph, um, so basically on the X axis you have number of documents, on the Y axis you have the query speed, and so GSI is the green dot there, uh, 92 milliseconds. So it's basically way faster than any other solution. Cool, so what's APU? APU is Associative Processing Unit, um, and think of it as the family of, or the class of uh, cards like GPU, TPU, and so on. Um, and it's a computer memory, so it has 48 million uh, memory cells. It has two million programmable bit processor cores. What it does essentially is that it can actually do bit logic really, really fast, in, in, all in memory. And um, it has cache. Uh, it supports algorithms like similarity search, vector search, you know, and image processing, and the list goes on. All right, so we had this APU on the back end, but how uh, does MUVE sort of fit in? And vector search, as you might maybe know <laughs> if you follow what's happening, also vector podcast, uh, well, first of all, on the base of this pyramid, you have KNN and ANN algorithms. The most famous one is probably HNSW, which is hierarchical navigable small world graph, but there are a variety of others like product quantization, inverted file, uh, locality sensitive hashing, and also we happened to invent an algorithm together with Max Irvin, who was giving a talk yesterday called BuddyPQ. Then vector databases basically were breeded by these algorithms so they could exist, so database like Milvus, VV8, Pinecone, uh, Quadrant, Vespam, and we had talks about them, some of them during this conference. Um, now, a layer above that is neural hash, uh, hashing, uh, neural hash frameworks. So, Haystack um, from DeepSat, Gina AI, um, uh, and also you have like open source and commercial players, players like Zeri, Hebia, uh, and FeatureForm are all commercial players, but they do somewhat similar things. Then a layer above, you getting closer to the user, um, you need to select an encoder, right? So be it a trans transformer model like BERT or CLIP if you go multimodal or GPT-3 uh, and so on. And further on, you go to the application business logic where you need to think, okay, if I have BM25 based uh, ranking, how do I introduce neural search into the mix? So how can I actually combine the things? So now you start thinking about use cases. Uh, and also support of symbolic filters, which is essentially filter queries in the lingo of Apache Solar or, or Elasticsearch, and ranking, and user interfaces on top, and then the user. So Muse really, encompasses all of these layers. So it's not just the algorithm, it's not just the database, and we can actually build, and Arne will talk more about it, we'll build connectors to this uh, later. And over to Arne. Thanks, Dima. <clears throat> so a bit more about the MU. So MUVE is a search application focused on multimodal and multilingual semantic search. So it's not a framework, it's a, what we intend to build is a like real application that customers can take into use um, uh, with fairly little customization. So the components of, of the application, we have search interface um, templates, including web app, search bar, browser plugins, and so forth. A common application logic, like query structures, filtering, uh, etc. Then multilingual, multimodal uh, encoders, um, supporting hugging face transformers, sentence transformers, 
clip, uh, custom fine-tuned uh, models. And Mighty, uh, which you might have heard um, yesterday in Max Irvin's talk, um, which is an embedding ser uh, hosting server. Um, we also support different um, uh, backends like OpenSearch, Elasticsearch, Solar, um, GSI APU. And we offer a model fine tuner for easy fine tuning of models for, for different use cases. So if you went to Hugh Bergum's talk yesterday, he spoke a lot about when you do semantic search, uh, vector search, you cannot just take off the shelf model and expect it to work very well. You need fine tuning for your use case, for your domain. Um, just briefly about Muver, um, very simple. Uh, having three three main components: uh, the model uh, model component for different different models, data loader for you to be able to load uh, custom data, and a trainer logic that uh, provides fine tuning uh, functionality. And this is very much work in progress at the moment. So okay, um, then a little bit about the um, GSI. Um, uh, application demo that we did um, and there are really two things that you need to need to uh, know about how to connect an open search um, uh, search engine into into the APU backend so first of all you have the indexing part so you need to define um, that you're using vectors so KNN vector uh, type uh, so this is where you where you encode your images or your text uh, into vectors, you need to tell the open search, GSI open search plugin that um, that you're using this KNN vector type. It can then uh, identify this field and you're able to load it into APU. On the other side, once you have your index, you need to be able to query it and there's a specific query syntax that needs to be um, implemented. So. On, on that side, you can you can see an example of, of that. Okay, so what does the query workflow flow look like? So on the left hand side, you have the Muse application, which provides vectorized queries into the Open Search and APU plugin, um, which then passes the the query into the APU backend, which does similarity matching using Hamming space locality preserving neural hashing. And you will get top K document indices um, and, and instances. So you get a get a uh, list of list of results which are then passed to open search APU plugin again which enriches them with with uh, document metadata and returns them back to Muse application, which then presents the results for, for the end user. Anything you want to add? No? Oh, cool. All right, uh, for the demo, we, we used a couple of different encoders. So we used CLIP, uh, multilingual CLIP model for image search. So it supports more than 50 languages. Um, and you're able to, to encode uh, the images and, and text uh, using this um, this model, and uh, then we used a multilingual sentence transformer uh, model uh, from Hugging Face uh, for for text embeddings. Uh, for text uh, for for the data set in the demo, we used the Lion 400 million data set. Actually, we used 10 million subset of that um, uh, for for practical purposes. But it's the world's, world's largest openly available uh, image text pair data set. So it has images and captions of those images. And it's a nice, nice data set for, for kind of demo purposes, uh, at least. Yeah, just to quickly add to this, they recently released a billion scale uh, data set. So it's 5 billion images crawled on the web. So it's, it's very huge if you want to try it. All right, so let's um, let's do a demo. Um, uh, where is Can you see that? All right, so the user interface of the demo is very simple. We have a search bar 
we have index selection, so you can select between um, text embeddings, image embeddings, or keyboard search. This is for kind of comparison purposes, uh, so that we can we can benchmark different results. Um, you can set how many results you want um, to be returned. Uh, we have a pre-filter uh, functionality using safe search, so Lion 400 million dataset has a uh, annotation or met metadata for for kind of safe content and unsafe content. We've noticed that in some cases this is a bit noisy in the dataset, so not all images that are marked safe are really kind of for um, yeah. So safe. if you have kids here, please remove yeah, them yeah. from the room. <laughs> no. We're not going to show that kind of examples. But anyways, then we have a couple of um, uh, example queries here that are, are links that can be can be clicked. And we, we'll share a link to this demo, by the way, after the talk, so you, you can have a have a look and play around with it. Um, we can also do batch search, so um, multiple queries in parallel. So loading a text file, one query per line, um, it will perform pretty pretty fast. So We'll, we'll show examples of this. So let's look at a, like a, a very, very basic um, example. I'm going to search for red dress. I hope we don't get a demo effect. So I'm, this is now searching for red dress purely from images, not using any text metadata or any text field. And we get... Um, Fairly good results. Also, the search time, 69 milliseconds, is, is quite impressive for, for vector similarity search. Now, if we want to look at what that would look like in keyword search, it's a bit faster. The results are okay as well. So, you know, not huge difference. Maybe the, um, the results in the previous um, uh, run was were a bit more red. I don't know. <laughs> to, to, to my eye, at least. I don't know. Uh, 10 million for this, um, uh, for this uh, demo. All right. So let's, let's look at another example. So we spoke about multilingual. So if you, if you want to do multilingual, so I could, I could search something in Finnish because I'm from Finland. I want to, I, I want to find um, blue shoes. Where was it? Uh, yeah. yeah, there. And uh, I'm going to do first keyword search. And of course, it's not going to... Okay, Kengat. It, it found the word Kengat, which is shoes. Yeah, it can find some... Oh, these seem to be blue. Oh, <laughs> nice. But anyways, um, if we go to image embeddings, you get blue shoes, even without any any text information um, in in the um, in the uh, text, right? All right. Uh, any other examples that uh, batch query? Uh, yeah, let's, let's do batch query. But yeah. do you want to run any any multilingual? Yeah, stuff? let's try. We have uh, some pre-crafted queries down there. Um, yeah. So, for example, well, Sini Batinki in Russian, it's just the same query, but shows you a slightly different set, but in general understands the language. And there is no machine translation going on here. And, and the Chinese one? The Chinese one. Anyone speaks Chinese? Blue table and chairs. Yeah. Some images take time to load because we, oh, they don't load because they will load them from, from the source. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Long sleeveless dress. Like this? Uh, Sleep. I'm Russian, sorry. <laughs> Is that what you wanted? Long, sleeveless, and dress. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I can try that. Um, yeah, let's try batch search. The first, yeah. long, the first one is long, yeah, and it's sleeveless. Open back if you like. Uh, yeah, what, what is long? Define long. <laughs> How long? Thirty-two bit, sixty-four. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe maybe the last one, the the kid one, is is pretty long. Yeah, you okay. got. Yeah, okay. it's a gotcha. Yeah, it's great. Great example. Yeah. So okay, you can have two out, two out of three, not all three. So yeah. It's our. Uh, I, we just made yeah. them up. We asked around, so. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just for you know ease of use. But it's a great question, actually. Like yeah. How biased they are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So twenty queries in two hundred and sixty-five uh, milliseconds. So um, that's pretty good. So this enables different kinds of use cases, and we can kind of look at. Yeah, we have different. You can see the query here. So. Red dress, green shoes, man walking on the beach with a dog, which is fairly good, you know. Um, So I'm the Yeah, how many how many dresses you have in the same image? Yeah, we we haven't tried. It's a good good question. It's um yeah, very interesting. Yeah, it also depends what the model will pay attention to obviously. So it's attention based, but No. Um but we've seen it also recognize text, so in the image, yeah. right? So we have lots of different different uh, queries here. Um, so yellow dress with flowers. Okay, we have some yellow. We have some flowers. Not exactly perfect results, but I mean usually pretty good. Table and chairs. Big red house. Again, bear eating a fish by a river. Um, and if you if you click the image, you get a bigger bigger version of it, right? All right. Any other examples we want to show? Any favorite queries from the audience? <laughs> this is a red dress in Hebrew. Yeah. Slightly different set. Well, maybe largely different, but this goes back to how many um, instances they had per language because it's a multilingual model, so fifty languages support it. Yeah. All right. So maybe we can get back to the uh, presentation. Let me go to this slide here. Yeah. And as promised, uh, the search engine uh, development would not be complete without evaluation. So in this instance, we've used Cupid. It's an open source tool from Open Source Connections. Um, and here, it claims to support only Elasticsearch and Solar. But with a few tricks, you can actually um, connect any backend. So it doesn't even need to be a search engine in principle. Uh, in this case, we connected our Python uh, backend to it. And you need to solve a bit of course issues uh, across site the region things, but it works. So here I just exemplify red dress as a query and um, I chose NDCG at 10, uh, normalized discounted cumulative gain, <laughs> which pays attention to the position of that result with that label. And it's uh, basically for, um, uh, for uh, position rating, right? So it's like from poor to great. Uh, so here it's all great, at least to my eye, and I'm biased, of course, but all of these are red dresses to me. So it's like 100% NGCG, and it's an image uh, embedding search. Um, the other query is slightly less uh, perfect, bear eating fish in the river. Apparently the language model is very susceptible to usage of um, articles. So in, in previous examples we used a river, uh, a fish, here it's the river. Um, so it brings um, a otter on number four, so I had to say poor result, although maybe it's not that poor. Uh, it's still river and, and a fish, Salmon. So you get 97% NDCG. And here I wanted to summarize 
all three modes of search. So upper left corner, you have keyword retrieval. And if you remember uh, Joe Bergum's talk, uh, keyword retrieval is a fairly stable uh, you know, baseline against all new methods. Um, and so keyword retrieval actually came second. Uh, so here the average NDCG is 84%. Uh, it, wasn't, it was doing pretty well on all queries except that bear eating fish. So it's not very doing really well there. Um, and the first, uh, the first, the leader on this leaderboard is image, uh, which is far right. Uh, as you can see, you know, all green doing really well. And again, this is to my eye, um, but yeah, we will continue evaluating this. And in the middle, we have text embeddings, right? Multilingual text embeddings, it was a not clip model. And it's doing 75% on average. So it's the last one. So this was a bit of a revelation that sometimes vector search may not outperform the, the keyword retrieval. And again, re keyword retrieval here is not tuned. You could tune it more and have LTR on top and so on, learning to rank. But we didn't do it. So it's like base uh, configuration. Also, this is very small subset of queries, um, like to do a proper evaluation would need to have multiple different types of queries. We were, we knew kind of what we are looking for. These are short queries, looking for images, but proper evaluation, longer queries, different queries, different evaluators. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah we, we intend to do that. As you can the see, future. these are kind of almost keyword searches, right? So they are not questions, but you can actually ask natural language questions as well to these models, and that should work. All right, cool. Um, lessons learned. Uh, just a summary. Um, yeah, uh, building. If you if you pick an existing model uh, from Hugging Face or some other hub, you know you can you can get quite far. But um, with one asterisk that if you have a, a completely different domain, you need to do domain adaptation. This is where we see and have the vision for mover component which will move your model <laughs> to be <laughs> more compatible with your data set. Um, also, from our experience, we set out a very specific uh, timeline. It was like seven weeks, right, right Arne? Mm -hmm. And we completed it with moves because moves already existed before we started. Of course, we had to add some code there. But in general, it was fairly fast um, and you know, the recommended approach, at least for us going forward. Um, there is also an argument flying here and there that it's not the case that uh, vector search is, is kind of high performing and that it scales to billion level. Well, Vespa has a lot of blogs, but some people say it's, uh, it's not so easy. Actually, it is. If you look, um, it, it's doable. It, I don't want to say easy. Um, in the big ANN challenge last year, uh, uh, APU showed really, really competitive results, and it was billion scale. So every um, data set contained at least one billion vectors. Um, and uh, also, we didn't mention it during this uh, demo, but in production setting, if you are implementing an e-commerce application, for example, you will need support for filters. And usually the way this works is that you want to pre-filter, let's say, by color or price range or both, and then uh, perform the neural search, not vice versa. And unfortunately, in some implementations of like open search, for example, they do the opposite. So you might actually lose, uh, after doing the ANN search, if you post filter, you might lose all of your results, or you need to over query again and again, right? So that's a bit suboptimal. So here, APU supports pre-filter functionality. Yeah, have to say that other products are working on, on this functionality as we heard yesterday from Alessandro's talk as well. All right, some, some references, something that we mentioned during the, during the um, talk. Um, top left, we, we wrote a blog post about, about this demo. Um, you can find the, the links at the bottom. So if you go to blog.muse.io, uh, you will find uh, our blog post, which explains bit more, in a bit more detail what we did. Um, also, uh, Dimitris' um, blog post about speeding up BERT search in Elasticsearch. So um, that's a great resource. There's a great blog post by GSI Technology um, that looks at uh, image search um, and, and cites our, our work uh, as well. And if you're interested in the, um, uh, the similar, similarity search, 
uh, that's behind uh, the the APU um, backend. There's a paper by by GSI Technology uh, giving you lots of the details. So um, we'll we'll share the slides on on Berlin Buzzwords website and and you can access these these um, resources. There's also a link to the demo, um, the top one. There's a new website, um, uh, searchium.ai, which is which is uh, GSI's um, uh, cloud SaaS offering. Um, go and check it out. Uh, check check muse.io. Um, send us email. Connect to us on on LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, we're happy to take your questions now. Thank you for the great and uh, entertaining talk. Uh, uh, nice uh, demo. Uh, wh were the uh, results uh, in the times in the demo actually using this accelerator? Uh, so my question was kind of like, how do you see uh, sort of availability of these accelerators, and especially yeah. for horizontal scaling when you're when it doesn't fit on one of them? Mm. Yeah. So for the uh, this demo uses the APU backend. So what we did now live. Um, it was using the APU backend, so we used uh, the APU cloud um, uh, for for the uh, similarity matching. Keyword search. Keyword, keyword search is in, in also in cloud, but you know. Open yeah. Search, but not yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for for horizontal scaling of APU, uh, you would need to talk to GSI. We have many uh, or a couple of couple of uh, people from GSI here, so so. Yeah, you can you can say. Yeah. <laughs> Great talk, guys. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yaniv. I'm the director of product at uh, GSI slash Search You May I. I've joined uh, uh, them one month ago from AWS. Uh, so now we are launching our SaaS platform where you can connect your Elasticsearch or OpenSearch uh, to our platform. So you can check this link and contact us and we will be happy to talk with you and get your feedback. And it's a great example by uh, Dimitri and Arne. Uh, super interesting application to build on top of our uh, infrastructure. And uh, you can consume it in various ways, but uh, we can take it uh, offline. Thank you. And it, uh, sure. Hi. So uh, I have some questions regarding, to, regarding performances. So you mentioned that um, the approximate vector search method you're using can uh, scale to like a billion of documents. And so I was kind of interested in what are the performances when you reach that kind of scale. And also if you have some comparison between APU and also GPU, because some of the approximate vector search libraries support GPU. And I was wondering if you had some numbers you could share. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to? Yeah, can you, yeah. Yeah. Oh. He needs the mic. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, there is, as to my knowledge, there is no like public, publicly available benchmarking. Uh, there are some internal benchmarking in JSI, as, very, as far as I know. But the public one, if you go to Big ANN Challenge, um, Google it, and you'll find the link. Um, so they publish the leaderboard, and they also publish ahead of time the requirements for the competition. So in one of the tracks, you needed to uh, compete at least at 10,000 queries per second. For the track with a custom hardware, they didn't have any uh, lower bound limitation, but basically GSI was competing with the likes of Intel um, and NVIDIA. And so NVIDIA had a GPU implementation. So GSI came, I think, third, if I remember correctly. But it's like just a few milliseconds difference. And it's billion scale. And it's not only billion scale, so you have like billion vectors. You also have multiple um, d d diversity in the dimensionality. So it could be like 128 dimensions all the way to 256. 
um, and they plan to do even further because, for example, clip model produces 512 dimensions and you can have bird model producing 768 and so on, right? So, um, so yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but basically you can access those uh, benchmarks. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I just got curious about this accelerator. I'm not familiar with the technology, but my, for what I understand, it has some kind of FPGA uh, in it. Or so you could customize it by uh, synthesizing some custom logic on it. Or okay. So my name is Joa Wexler, and uh, what uh, the difference between the APU and the FPGA is the heart of the uh, APU. The heart of the APU is the uh, associative processing, which means that you're taking uh, memory cells and bec it became uh, computers. So you can run a lot of uh, computing in a memory without need to run into CPU back and forth. And this is the main advantage of the APU. This is the, the uh, reason why we can achieve it with such a big data set uh, so fast uh, search. Maybe another note. Um, so this is the version one of our APU. Uh, next year, hopefully, we will launch our second generation. And on a conservative estimation, it will be even 10x faster than our current, you know, for comparing to version one. And as you have mentioned, I think that we have like our speed, sweet spot is somewhere between CPU and GPU. And we found that vector search is optimized on our infrastructure. And essentially, we've built on top of it like various algorithms, um, software libraries, etc. you know, to optimize it and, you know, we, we will optimize it in the future. Thank you. More questions? Well, thanks very much for coming to the Thank talk. Thank you.